We need a vision, and we need a basic vision. Sometimes we overthink things, and we need to simplify things. I believe we need to broaden our vision, but sometimes if you try to look too deep or too far ahead, you might get a little confused, but we do need to broaden our vision. And another aspect of our basic vision this morning is vision for serving. And I believe this is a very appropriate day for ministering vision for serving. I've been anticipating this message, and it just seemed like, okay, I was expecting Ron Yusey to be here, as he said on the little video, and we had four services scheduled, but he'll come back another time. But vision for serving, and I want to talk about especially vision for serving each other. Vision for serving people. We get the concept that we're serving God, but we need a vision for serving each other. Let's see. We don't have a clock in the back of the room. So. (laughs) So. I'm looking this way. (laughs) Okay, thanks for showing me. That'll help. I've got my little watch out. Before I begin, I want to pray. I want the anointing of the Spirit to work through me and minister to us. Father, we love you. We love you so much. Thank you, sir. You are so good and so kind. And you remind us that our love is to be for others also. You remind us, Father, that our sincerity toward you should be expressed to everyone around us. Let us love one another sincerely and deeply, Father. And let us love you in the same. Lord, minister to us. Let your spirit speak the things that I will fail to say. Let your spirit minister speak to speak through me. And I surrender, Father, for your glory and cause. In Jesus' name, amen. My life is not my own. It does not belong to me. I keep adjusting. I found an unlevel spot for my foot, so I I apologize for doing all this. I'm in for the long haul right now, so I got to get comfortable. My life is not my own. Jeremiah 10 and 23 said, I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. It is not for man to direct his steps. We could minister here for an hour, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit marinate your soul with this scripture and just let it, just let it minister to you as I continue. I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own, and my life is not my own. It is not for man to direct his own steps. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. He said, do you not know? And Paul was asking this question in in a manner as though uh, maybe if somebody did not realize this, he was shocked or at least dismayed. He said, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? If you're saved and you have the Spirit of God in you, and so I'm asking you, do you not know this, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? We talked about tabernacling with God last week as though we were all in the same tent. Here, he's saying your body is the temple and he is in you. You're the tent. Amen? You're the tent. That's why That's why you're supposed to direct your life in the ways that glorify God and that honor God. That's why why we have to look to God in all things. Where's my water? I don't know why I'm so dry. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sir. That was good. Hey, thank you, brother. I bet you wish you had one. This is cold. I'll share with anyone after service. 
Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Say this, repeat after me. I am not my own. Wow. Praise God. You act like you believe it. You were bought with a price, and that price was the life of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, honor God with your body. And it goes on, but this is enough for now. Let me move on to Matthew chapter 22. You see, we serve each other by loving each other, caring for each other. And I'm going to elaborate on this. Beginning in verse 37, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Let your thoughts be stayed on him. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. The second is like it. Now, to, to show you what this is like, I mean, if the second is like the first, it's, I have a twin brother. Now, I believe, sincerely believe, he's uglier than I am. And we debate about this regularly. But he's like me. And if you see him, you may think he's me. If you see him, if you see me with a, the wrong woman, it's him. I mean, it's just that simple. <laughs> We've had people alarmed at local funerals and people from other neighboring churches here. They, they thought I had backslidden or something. And he does it on purpose. He shows up and keeps his arm draped around her and all this stuff. And people are looking and he... Anyway, but the second commandment is like the first. Love God with all your heart, with your soul, and with your mind. This is the first and greatest, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And guys, there's a place for you to love and respect yourself, take care of yourself, and treat yourself right. That's why, that's why you, you eat every day, you rest every day, and on and on. You clothe yourself, and on and on. Love those around you as you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you won't love those around you. And if you don't love those around you, you probably don't know how to love yourself. Life is bigger than we are. Life is just bigger than we are. You know, I'm thinking right now about the, the little flood. And did you, <laughs> did you guys not realize that in two weeks it'll be as though that never happened and we're on to everything else? Did do you... Realize that whether this happened here or there or somewhere, somewhere else, if this is the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life, and I mean it was the church, but I'm involved. If this is the worst thing that ever happened, man, wouldn't life be an easy street? It'd be nice. And our troubles aren't as big as, it's interesting, our troubles are not as big as sometimes we think they are. But our God is bigger than most of the time what we think he is. Amen. And people are more important than we think they are. Life is bigger than any of us. And that's why we need help. And that's why people need help. They need our love. They need our affection, our attention. The things that God calls us to do, each of us to do, cannot be done alone. We need help and so does everyone else. And that's why we're here. I mean, let, let your neighbor, whoever you're sitting by, just nudge him and say, say, I love you. I'm here for you. I appreciate you. <laughs> I knew he was helping me out. Thank you, Jose. Praise God. I'm just admiring the crowd out here. Okay. I mean, you can, look at, you can look at your neighbor and say, you're better looking than they say you are. <laughs> and they already say you're good looking. I heard Zach a moment ago. 
Those around us need support. They need encouragement. They need an act of kindness, a word of kindness. The fruit of the Spirit spells this out in Galatians chapter 5 and going into verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. You know, I'm just thinking about these things when we were cleaning the church out and it looked devastating and so many were there. There was love, there was joy. Everybody was excited. Everybody was happy. I didn't see anybody that was down and, and in the mully grubs and saying, oh, no, oh, what are we going to do? No, we knew what to do. Rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. We will be glad in it. We will rejoice in it. And peace and patience and kindness. Everyone needs a word of kindness. That's why it's so important that we always build each other up and never ever tear each other down. That's why if, if those, if they're not around us, we say good things about them to others and never criticize and put them down or cut them down. We only build each other up. If you love yourself, you'll love others. If you go around tearing everyone down, you're literally tearing yourself down because what you're doing is harming you Probably more than others. First Thessalonians 5, 14 and 15. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid. Did you know that there are those who are bold? They're bold and, and they move forward. And, and many times they don't know how to understand those who may be more timid. He's telling us, encourage the timid. Be there for them. Don't look at someone's weakness and then despise them. He goes on and says, help the weak. We don't despise each other. We should never despise each other in regard to each other's weaknesses because we have weaknesses too. We have weaknesses. And my weakness is not yours and your weakness is not mine. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Help to lift the load. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Kindness goes a long way. A word of encouragement goes a long way. When we love someone, we pray for them. When we love someone, we serve them. When we love others, we're there with them. Not just there for them, they're with them. Did you, how many of y'all are familiar with the royal law in Scripture? Are you familiar with that phrase? The royal law. I want to read to you, to you in James 2 and 8. It says, if you really keep the royal law found in Scripture. Now, so if it's a law and it's a royal law, who is royal other than the king of kings, and we're keeping his law. If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. Love your neighbor as yourself. I want to give you five steps. I'll try to get this done before we close. Uh, five steps to serving others. I'm going to expedite this just a little bit. Number one, first step, change your position. You see, I realize it's never convenient to serve others because we always have something we need to get done. We always have obligations and duties, responsibilities, and, and we're behind on everything too. It's never convenient to help someone and, and not do the things that you think you need to do. But change your position and realize it's very important to help someone else. First John 4 verse 20 and 21. If anyone says I love the Lord, how many in here loves the Lord? Anybody? Does anybody love the Lord? All right. If anyone says I love, the, I love God yet hates his brother. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to get excited like you just did, but does anyone in here hate your brother or your sister? This is this is a suggestion. 
Does anyone in here hate your brother or your sister? Is there anyone in here that you get around certain people, you just start fuming? You, you get angry, you get mad, or you go to bed with those kind of thoughts? If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So change, change your position, change your outlook. And we love everyone, even the stranger, even the one who persecutes or harms us. Number two, take time to listen. God gave us two mouths and one ear. No, I said that wrong. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Take time to listen. Galatians 5 and 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. And we should, we should not be quick to anger, but we should be quick to hear, to listen. And when, some, when we ask someone how they're doing, and maybe they hesitate, and we really weren't curious how they were doing, you know. They ask us how we're doing. We say, oh, I'm blessed. And we go on our way with all of our negative thinking. And, and, and it's okay to restrain negative talk. But if somebody hesitates, you ask, how are you doing today? And they hesitate. Maybe they need someone to listen because maybe they have no one to listen. And maybe they need someone to listen. Be, be quick. Take time to listen. Letting faith express itself through love. Amen. How many times, I mean, if somebody wants to just bellyache, gripe, and complain, and I've had them come into my office and tell me how big of a demon I was and go on and on and on. I finally decided, I took the advice of another man, I finally decided that when that happens, after 15 minutes, that's enough. After 15 minutes, because if I give them 20, I might start believing it. So after 15 minutes, that's enough. But if they, if they need to talk, listen. And you may not have 15 or 20 minutes, but give them some time. And then, then let them know, assure them you're praying for them. And I believe if you have the Spirit of God within you, you will be able to give them a word of wisdom, a word of encouragement that will make their day so much better. Number three, care, even when it costs you something. How many times do we say, well, let me know how I can help. And that's good. That's good. And then be sure and be there. Or maybe even follow up. We want to forfeit an empty life. Did you know a selfish life is an empty life? If, if your life, if my life is all about me, it's only about me, I'm living and I'm experiencing a very shallow and empty life. In order to find fulfillment, we have to serve God and serve others. Remembering that you can't just serve God and not serve others and, and it be okay. It, it doesn't work that way. We serve God and we serve others. Forfeit the empty life. Find fulfillment. Matthew 10 and verse 44. He says, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple... I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Amen. If you just give a cup of cold water, he said to one of my little ones. I've got too many thoughts. I mean, you won't lose your reward. What if you, what if you stand up, if you stand in the gap and fight, a fight, fight against abortion? How much reward do you think you'll have? Amen. But just a cup of cold water, you will not lose your reward. What this tells me is I've got to give that cup of cold water to someone else if I want a reward. And notice I offered you my water when this is over. 
If I just give it to myself, you will never be rewarded for something that you do for yourself. The opposite of love. Now, you have to do things for yourself. I'm so glad that, that you dressed up and fixed up and you look good. And, and you look better than they, they said you did. Amen. See, you have to learn how to love yourself, value yourself, in order to value someone else. When you're hungry, you feed yourself because you love yourself, and when you love someone else who is hungry, you'll feed them too. Amen. If you feel like you are unworthy of good things, you will consider others unworthy of good things. Fulfillment comes when we serve God and when we serve others. Achievement is when we serve ourselves. It might be the home, the car, the clothes. It might be a host of other things. When we, when we serve ourselves, that's achievement. And God wants you to be achievers. That's, that's part of the blessing of God in your life. That's part of the blessing. And, and you're acquiring, you're achieving, and God is doing that for you. God wants you to, to have that. But if you want fulfillment in your life, for you you realize that your life is worth living. Your life is worth something. You must love God and love others. You must love someone as yourself. In fact, even Scripture even says prefer, prefer them above yourself. Love them. And I translate that even love them more than I love myself. Prefer them more than I prefer myself. Then you find fulfillment. And fulfillment is kind of a, I've never figured out how to say this the way I, I want to say this. I guess it would be something like this. Fulfillment is self-evidence that you have a reward waiting for you. When your life is fulfilled, you know you have a reward waiting. But if you have no fulfillment in your life, if you're not serving God and serving others, there's no fulfillment. If it's all about you, there's no, there might be achievement, but there's no fulfillment and there's no reward. It comes in serving others. Remember, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. Galatians 5.13 says, serve one another in love. To serve others well, we need to have faith that we are ultimately serving someone greater. If I serve you, you know, I've been in construction since I was 16, and I've shared, I've told you these things. Uh, it wasn't trying to get sympathy. It was kind, kind of bragging, you know. I've, I've worn shovels out. I know what it's like to wear shovels out. And nowadays, I know what it's like to run a, a pen out of ink. But, uh, but when I was busy wearing those shovels out, digging ditches, and my dad was a very interesting man. He was a he was my best friend, and he passed away early on in life. He was my best friend. He taught me something that I don't know if I ever conveyed to my own sons or not. But he said, when you dig that ditch, he said, you dig a square ditch. He taught us to work, and, and he said, you dig that, you dig it square. And so I was always confused. Why do we do a square ditch, a square bottom ditch, when we put a round pipe in it? You know, that, that just never really satisfied but I did what he told me to do. And uh, while I was out there, it would be freezing cold. It would be, it would be uh, burning heat. But I knew I was doing it for the glory of God because I was doing it for my family, providing for them. And the Lord said, if I would, the Bible says, if I would not provide for my own family, I would be worse than an infidel, an unbeliever. And so I rejoiced. And everything I did, no matter how hard it was, and, and no matter how easy it was, I'm doing it for the glory of God and for the cause he created me to, and, and I'll just do it. When it's time to dig a ditch, I'll dig a ditch. When it's time to vacuum water off a floor, I'll vacuum water off a floor. But there's more, and I'm going to get to it in just a moment when we get down here to evangelism. Let me continue. Number four. Follow the steps of Jesus. Out of five steps of serving others, 
follow the steps of Jesus. Mark 10, 43 through 45. He said, not so much with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Have you ever thought about that? I'm sure you've read it. Let me read it again. He said, not so with you, because he was mentioning how that the Gentile rulers, they like to boss and command everybody. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. If you want to be great, serve. Serve. And most people have the the hope that someday they'll be great. But we've learned, and it's evident, if you can help others. You see, you're you're, you're only as valuable to someone as to the level that you can benefit their life and whatever it is. If, if, uh, if it's giving money, if it's giving time, if it's giving encouragement, and the more you can build others up and the more you can serve others, the more valuable you become to those around you. And they may never be able to repay you, but you're valuable to them. They appreciate what you do. And... and uh, uh, it's just the, just what Jesus said. If you want to be great, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Amen. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. That means indebted to everyone. Because you're a child of God. Because you're a creation of God. You may not even know him, but because you're a creation of God... I must be a servant. I must be a slave. I'm obligated. I'm duty-bound to to help you, to assist you, to be a blessing to you. For even, and get a hold of this, for even the Son of Man, that is Jesus Christ, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served. He did not come to be served. He had everything in heaven he wanted. He need. I mean, everything. The son of the God of creation. And when he came, he did not come to be served. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull someone out of this. I don't usually say much about anybody pulling names because if I leave someone out, uh, it might hurt their feelings. But, but Caprice was a young lady who, who lived in a home and they fared very well. She went through her schooling, and when she graduated, one of she went to Kenya. I'd love for y'all to hear the story of the uh, uh, black mamba. Is that what the snake was? Yeah, coming after her, and all of a sudden it turned and bit itself and died. And uh, you know, if, if rattlesnakes they can bite each other and not harm each other. If they bite themselves, they die. It's weird. And the black mamba, which is I think the most poisonous snake there is coming after her in Kenya and it stopped her and bit itself and died. As a young girl, as a young girl in New York City taking care of babies with AIDS and getting kidnapped one day, that was, I, we need to hear these stories more often. Amen, how God delivered her and those guys that kidnapped her died in a car wreck. What, did they actually die? Okay, but they had the car, whatever. Personally, I think they did. So, (laughs) and then she went to Romania when nobody should have went to Romania and and met Nico. but, But she could have made choices and decisions to do things and bring her own success to herself but she was slave to all. And she went not to be served, but she went to serve. That is so commendable. Amen. So commendable. And at this point in her life, when so many missionaries are looking to settle back home, she's going back here in just a few weeks again, going to serve. Just give her another great big God bless you.
Well, here's the story of Jesus, the Son of Man. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. What do you want me to do? He asked in Mark 10 and verse 51. What do you want me to do when he spoke to the blind man? And the blind man just told him what he wanted. He said, I want to see. I want to see. And Jesus gave him his sight. See, Jesus came to serve. And he's asking you today, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do? What do you want Jesus to do? He came to serve. This is why he came. He came to serve. Amen. There's no one like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. And then I want to begin closing here with number five. Remember, there's a call to evangelism. And Christina, go ahead and let us begin playing this when you feel like it. You see, my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. And I sold out. When he bought me, he bought my soul. And I sold out. When he bought me, I surrendered everything. As a young man, I surrendered everything. He bought my soul. He bought my soul. And I remember hearing a preacher preach these very words when I was young. He bought my soul. And knowing it was the word of God, I knew from that moment. I realized what Jesus had done for me. I'd never really understood because I needed to hear it articulated. And when I heard it, it spoke to my spirit. And I realized he bought my soul. Now, you might pay me to dig a ditch. You won't get your money's worth nowadays, but you might pay me to. He bought my soul. And when I heard those words articulated, I, I realized, and I've never forgotten, he bought, Jesus bought my soul with his life, with his blood. Remember, there's a call to evangelism. My life is not my own. Romans 15, 1 through 3 says, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the feelings of the weak and not to please ourselves. I'm talking about evangelism now. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself Jesus bought my soul there's there's someone hurting that needs you to comfort them there's someone crying and they need encouragement there's someone dying on the inside if not the out and they need someone to speak to them to pray for them and if I, as I am saying these things, you might be, somebody may be coming to your mind. You may have, you may have the faces flashing forward. He paid the price for them, no matter how lost they are. I've heard people say, well, if he can get saved, anybody can get saved. As though... Maybe the blood of Christ wasn't good enough. But he bought my soul. And he bought your soul. He paid, he paid the price. And you and I at one time were destined to the way we describe it, simply put, a devil's hell. We were destined to be lost for eternity. But the hope he gave us is he bought my soul. And so whether we were like that guy or not, uh, if God can save him, he can save anybody. Everybody was lost. There was not one that didn't come short of the glory of God. And we still struggle with things today. And the Bible Proclaimed in both the Old Testament and New Testament, there's none righteous, no, not one. He bought my soul. 
And he paid the price for that one who was lost. He paid the price for that one. We can get so busy doing our thing, doing things that someone else is paying us to do. We can get so busy that we forget about the one who's dying, who's crying, who's ripped and torn from the inside out. And they don't know how to conduct their lives. And one scripture was making reference to things something like this. He said, of which were some of you. And some of us, I thank God I was raised in a godly home. I, I didn't go through some things that I hear others went through. But I still came short of the glory of God. And I'm so glad he bought my soul. But for just, a, just another moment, remember, recall, there's someone you know. Someone that you are very close to, but they are very far from God. They are very close to you, but they are very far from God. Don't forget that person. He bought my soul, and he paid the price so they could be saved. We're talking about vision, vision of serving. I want us to pray in just a moment, but Christina, I'd, I would like to ask you to go ahead and, and minister in song just a moment. Would you, would you rise and... Just let the Holy Spirit minister to you. surrender again. Right now, just surrender again. Just surrender to Him. You were born to serve the Lord. You were created. You were created for nothing else. There's nothing else you were created for. There's nothing else He created and you're fit for. He created you to serve Him. And if you try any other thing, it's not going to work. It's like trying to put the, uh, the, the, the square peg in the round hole. You don't fit. There's no fit for you. That's why our fulfillment comes in serving Him. Our fulfillment is found in serving and serving. Right here, right now, just confess to Him, Lord, I surrender. I was born to serve you. I surrender. Thank you, Jesus.
we're going to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. If there's anything in your life hindering you for taking, from taking that next step, surrender right now. Surrender right now. Say, yes, Lord. I surrender. Amen. Isn't God so good? Isn't God so good? He's so, so good to you. He's so good for you. He's so good through you. He loves you so much. And we love you so much. There may be someone here that has never accepted Jesus as Savior and made Him your Lord. And the way you accept Him as Savior is by making Him your Lord. If you would like to accept Him as your Savior, your God, making Him your Lord, I would like to lead you in prayer right here, right now. If there's anyone that would like to pray this prayer, then follow me. Pray in your own words or pray the words I say. But Heavenly Father, I believe you. You are my God. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the God of eternity. You are the lover of my soul. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, Father, this day. I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son, your only Son, your only begotten Son, whom you sent to this earth through a virgin named Mary. He came to this earth as a baby and became a man until he gave himself as a sacrifice for my salvation. With the shedding of his blood, with the giving of his life, he bought my soul, Jesus bought my soul. And I surrender and I accept the Savior. This Jesus is my Savior, and I make Jesus my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord, and I will follow you all the days of my life. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all my sin. Deliver me from all of my shame, that which I brought upon myself, and, and Lord, that that. When, when I made the fool of myself, deliver me from my shame. Heal me from my pain. The pain imposed by others and the, that which was imposed by myself. Heal me. Heal. Heal us, Father. Heal us. We surrender. Make it as though it never happened. And now we have the fullness of you. Father, I will, I will serve you all the days of my life. I say so in Jesus' name. And as we close this prayer, let's just worship a little more. Christina, would you would you just lead us again? so good guys we love you I love every one of you I appreciate and value every one of you you are so important you are favored by God favor one another bless one another amen let's take let's take what we received this morning home with us let's not lose it let's take it home